Lift up your offerings to heaven. Say, oh Lord, oh Lord, I lift up my offering. I lift up my offering to the hills. To the hills. From whence cometh my help. From a sixth. But I decree and declare. I decree and declare this offering. This offering. This amount. This amount. As I sow it. As I sow it. It will reap. It will reap. A hundredfold. A hundredfold. In the next. In the next. One hundred days. One hundred days. Say to yourself, I. I. Was care created. Was created to prosper. To prosper. I was made. I was made to be fruitful. To be fruitful. I was made, I was made to, increase to increase in the life, in the life of this world. Of the One of the common traits of someone who is a known false teacher is the fact that they desire to enrich themselves. Ed Citronelli, who is someone who I obviously and vehemently oppose in his doctrinal beliefs. Uh, I believe that he is a false teacher, not someone who just espouses some false teachings, but a, but a, a practicing false teacher, a heretic. I command right now. Get fat. The glory, my goodness. Do you see me? You are seeing glory. Amen. Eh? Yes. I look like Jesus. Yes. Uh, and what he has done is kind of typical as part of the playbook, which is to speak of tithing as a way to kind of guilt people into giving. Um, what he has done, as a matter of fact, even to go above and beyond the tithe, kind of in a subtle sense. But what you'll notice oftentimes when they do so, they don't stick to the scriptures. So let's get ready for God's offering. We believe in tithing. Amen. I said we believe in tithing. Amen. I don't care how famous whoever said what he said. I don't care. Amen. I will believe the report of the Lord better. Amen. Well, when you say that you will believe the report of the Lord better, the question is, what report of the Lord are you speaking of? Because where did the Lord tell us as Gentiles to tithe? As a matter of fact, where in the scriptures does Jesus tell anyone to tithe? Let's just let's go to the passages. Let's go to the Bible. Since we're talking about believing the report of the Lord versus somebody else, which I think is a good thing. But let's see if we can find if we can locate where Jesus speaks of telling someone about to tithe. Let's see if we can go somewhere in the scriptures and see if we can find where Jesus told anyone to tithe. So if we go to, let's just type in the word tithe. And if we pull up on the screen, we'll notice that there are two places in the New Testament where the word tithe is mentioned, uh, specifically mentioned by Jesus. It's the exact same account. It's just shown up in two different, two different passages in Matthew 23, 23 and in Luke eleven forty two. And look what Jesus is saying. And you tell me. If you think that Jesus is telling anyone to tithe, if he's obligating anyone to tithe, let's read it. He says, woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for you tithe mint and dill and cumin and have neglected the weightier matters of the law, justice and mercy and faithfulness. These you ought to have done without neglecting the others. And so the same thing is stated in Luke 42 as it is in Matthew 23, 23. And just to be clear, a tithe is just simply 10%. And so the question is, are we supposed to tithe? Well, I've stated before, I've, I've done videos before, where we are not obligated to tithe. Now, notice what Jesus connects the tithe to. He says, for you tithe mint and dill and cumin and have neglected the weightier matters of the law. So he's referencing, letting us know that what they're doing is an obligation to the law, but they neglect the weightier matters of the law, not so much the tithe. In other words, he's even diminishing the tithe. The tithe was for a purpose under the old law, under the old covenant, but that's no longer uh, in force today. We, we're not under the old covenant. As a matter of fact, as Gentiles, we're not under any of those covenants. But if anyone wants to have to adhere to uh, this principle of tithing that's commanded by the law, then you're going to also have to adhere to all the other elements of the law. And so it would be false for him to state that he is going to believe the report of the Lord. Now he is going to bring up 
uh, something that Paul says, and I think he he twists that as well. I hear you, do, do you know that the New Testament given is more than the than than? <laughs> oh my goodness! That's right. It's sir. more than Malachi's uh, portion. It's Malachi what? said tithes. Use the word tithe. Malachi. I hear you, sir. Tithe is what? Tithe. Ten percent. Ten percent. Paul. 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 Somebody say Paul. Paul. He said to the Corinthians in Second Corinthians chapter nine and also chapter ten. Yes. He said that a man should give up in proportion to what he has. Yes. Ah. So if we were to take that literally, meaning that we should give exactly in proportion to what God has given. God has given us an awful lot, and so we should give the same thing, match that back. Well, one, God doesn't need that money. Uh, two, that's not quite what he's saying. And if we look at what Paul is saying, keep it in context, let's go to what he's saying in 2 Corinthians chapter 9, and look what Paul says. Looking at verse 6, he says, the point is this, whoever sows sparingly will also reap sparingly, Who also whoever sows bountifully will also reap bountifully. Each one must give as he has decided in his heart. Notice what he says, decided in his heart, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. And so to compel someone to kind of obligate someone into giving a certain amount, well, that's what he's doing. And so he's violating the whole premise that Paul is bringing up. Paul is not saying to give a particular amount. Paul has said, look what he says. He says, as each one has decided in his heart to give, not reluctantly. So here's how I would say, if a person wants to give $40, if a person wants to give $400 and they can do so cheerfully, not reluctantly, well, then amen. But if you give $401 and that causes you to frown, well, then don't give it. God does not need that extra dollar. As a matter of fact, God doesn't need anything. What he needs, obviously, is your obedience and he wants you to support the ministry, but not under some compulsion as he's doing. Ah! Do the math fool. Do the math fool. <laughs> okay, so he said, do the math fool. Well, what math? Again, we're going by the scriptures, and so the scriptures are telling us not to give under some sort of compulsion, which is what he's trying to do. And he wants to guilt people. He's going to offer promises, so either entice them by their heart, their desires, what they might want, or guilt them like, you know what? Yeah, God has done this. I've got to give more than I was planning on giving, even though it causes me to do so reluctantly. It's more than 10. It's more. If you have a thousand dollars, a hundred dollars is not in proportion. I hear you, sir. So that means in proportion is more than 10. Now, before we continue with what he's saying, let's keep in mind what he is going to do. He is going to try to flatter the people, try to entice the people, try to, as Paul says, because they have itching ears, they will go to someone like an Ed Trinelli. They will go to him to hear what they want to hear, that you're going to be blessed. You're going to be um uh, the greatest thing since sliced bread. You're going to have the greatest things. You're going to have the best things. You're going to be blessed. You, you'll be out of debt. You'll never be poor. Your children will never be poor. He's making promises that God never promised, that there's nowhere uh, any promises like that found in the Bible, but he makes these promises. And he does so for a particular reason. I want to put this on the screen. He says that uh, Paul tells us in 1 Timothy chapter 6, and I start in verse 5, because he's speaking about these people like him who are depraved uh, in the mind and deprived of the truth. He says, imagining that godliness is a means of gain. This man does not fly around in, uh, he doesn't go, he doesn't go uh, coach. Uh, he lives, he lives pretty nicely. Uh, well, and that's typically how false teachers do. They want to enrich themselves off of you and your money. Let's continue what he says. He says, but godliness, Paul says, with contentment is great gain. That's the game that you ought to be looking for. Godliness, he says, that with contentment, being content and being godly, that is great gain. Look what he says, for we brought nothing into this world. So he's obviously speaking of worldly possessions and monetary things. Uh, we brought nothing into this world and we cannot take anything out of this world. But if we have food and clothing with, th with these things, we will be content. But those who desire to be rich fall into temptation, into a snare, into many senseless and harmful desires, and plunge uh, people into ruin and destruction. For, look what he says, and this is, this is really what Ed probably needs to listen to. He says, for the love of money is a root of all kinds of evil. And that's what we see here. And he's going to entice them, those who also who follow him with that same love. Because let's be clear, the people that follow him, 
they also have this love for money. Are you ready? Yes, sir. My God will bless you. I receive. You will never be poor in this world. I receive. You will never lack bread. I receive. You will never lack water. Amen. You will never lack shelter. Amen. Your children will never beg. Amen. I said your children will never beg. Amen. I said your children will never beg. Amen. Any of your children will never beg. Amen. I speak to this section. I said any of the children will never beg. Amen. Your children will never be homeless. Amen. Your children will never be vagabond. Amen. Your children will never go to shelters. Amen. Your children will never depend on government handout. Amen. Your children will never depend on government handout. Amen. Your children will never have to open a case in the welfare office. Amen. I said your children will never have to open a case in the welfare office. Amen. Ah, they will be blessed for Forever. Amen. They will be blessed forever. Anybody that is in this ministry, if you're poor, hey. just just stay, stay, stay here three months. <laughs> That's all. <laughs> Under three months. <laughs> that 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 but poverty garment. Mm. There's an angel here that changes garments. Yes. Oh, you didn't hear what I say. I, I said there's an angel here that changes garments. Amen. And so because they desire these things, they, I mean, anyone would want their children to be taken care of. And anyone would want to be also financially well off themselves. But if that's the goal, if that's what you're looking for, and that's how you're trying to use this ministry, if that's how you're trying to use the gospel, well, then you'll have your reward. You may even have some monetary rewards here on earth. But that will be the extent of your war of your rewards. That will be the extent of your blessings. So uh, avoid someone like an Ed who wants to put someone back under a yoke of bondage, who wants to preach a different gospel, a gospel of works. Because keep in mind, he's trying to obligate people to the law and to paying this tithe without keeping the rest of the law. But the only purpose of doing so is just to either enrich himself or uh, tap into the minds, into the motivation, the greedy motivations of others to for them to also be wealthy or other people who might be feeling guilty because, you know, what, I want to be a I, I don't want to disappoint God. I want to honor God, be faithful to God. And so he has given me. And so, you know what, I'm going to give more, but not just 10 percent um, because he's done for me. I feel guilty in only giving 10. Let me give 20 percent. Let me give all that I don't have. And so there in there is the reason why we need to be careful about people like him, number one. But he is not the issue. The real issue is us just simply not reading our word, because if we read our word, we'll see that this that he's saying that he's speaking of is not found in Scripture. And someone like him should not be a threat, should not be a problem if we just do like we're supposed to and read the scriptures that God has given us. Amen. Loud.